What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel today, right now, right this very second. We're going to be talking about the Nexus 5X and seeing how it holds up in 2019, looking forward, looking backwards, looking at you, looking at the mirror. We're going to look at this phone at all sides and see and make the decision, is this phone still worth it in 2019? Now, this was actually one of the most popular double eye swies I made last year. If you don't know what a double eye swy is, read a book, okay? Read the biography of Simple Alpaca, you'll find out. And I realized that it's probably for good reason because this this phone is super controversial because there's a lot of people who praise this phone and put on a pedestal. It's like one of the greatest phones ever made. But then there's also a lot of people who say this was one of the worst phones ever made. And I'll talk about both sides in a second. You know, I'm not political. I try to stay out of politics and I try to be in the middle of everything. So I don't, I'm not right winged. I'm not left wing in this case. I'm not a hater or a lover. I'm just kind of presenting you with what I think it is and just kind of going with that. But the Nexus 5X specifically was another collaboration between LG and Google. And this was pretty interesting because they tag teamed on the LG Nexus 4, the LG Nexus 5, and then eventually the Nexus 5X, which came out after the Nexus 6. So kind of awkward. They took a little break there, but I think in terms of the overall like look of it and just everything about it was super solid in my opinion. Now, one of the greatest things about this phone was that when it was released, it was actually pretty cheap. It wasn't like super expensive, unlike what Google Pixels are now. Well, they're still not super, super expensive, but like iPhones and all these different phones now, they're like over a thousand dollars, crazy amounts of prices. This phone was still relatively cheap and it wasn't really skimping out on anything. It was kind of like the Nexus 5 and Nexus 4 in a way, but I guess mentally I kind of thought of it like the cheaper Nexus because the Nexus 6P came out at the same time, it was more expensive and it was built way better, but that's kind of looking then. I mean, looking at it now, it's still, you know, I'm not going to lie. It feels pretty cheap. There's a bunch of plastic on it. It's primarily plastic. I'm not going to lie. The bezels on the front of this thing are super huge, but you do get a front facing speaker. They're not both speakers. It's just one of them, but I'll take a front facing speaker than no front facing speakers at all. The screen is 1080p. It is IPS. And I will say it, I wish they just put an AMOLED screen on this thing. They put an OLED screen on the Nexus 6. They put an OLED screen on the Nexus 6P. I don't know why they didn't put one on this. The screen does look a little washed out here and there. And I don't even think that's the worst problem of the body. You know, the screen, I'll, it's whatever. Okay. It's 5.2 inches. It's 1080p. Like I said, it's not horrible, but I think the one thing that just doesn't hold up too well on this phone specifically, and I don't say this a lot about every phone or just like the parts of it, like the volume button, the power button, things like that. I mean, over time, those things depreciate more so than any other part. I mean, the charging port probably, but this phone did not hold up too well. My specific unit didn't hold up too well with the parts of the phone because it was mostly built out of plastic and those parts felt very, very cheap. And I don't really like that. I don't really appreciate that about this phone because a lot of people who are going to end up buying this phone are probably going to get it used because you can't buy these things brand new anymore. And this is not going to feel as premium as you might expect. So to sum up the body pretty much, I mean, it's definitely like pretty cheap feeling. It doesn't feel premium. It looks kind of decent in a way, but you can definitely tell that it's not the most expensive phone that you're holding and it doesn't even feel like a $50 phone or $60 phone. I mean, it reminds me of like an iPhone 5C in a way, so kind of sucks there, but it is what it is. Now, software wise, this is pretty interesting. So it started off with Android Marshmallow and like many Nexus devices, they get supported for a very long time and it actually got supported up to Android Oreo. And I believe it got one of the last like security updates like a month or two ago, like a couple months ago, I can't remember, but officially it stopped getting updates at Android Oreo. So that's actually pretty cool. And I respect that a lot about Google. They took out an initiative to make certain phones last longer than others. And the Nexus line, the Pixel line now are one of those phones and on a pedestal for a lot of people because it got software for a long time. So that and the mixture of it, you know, being cheap and, you know, being affordable was primarily the reason why most people bought it and a lot of people liked it. But there's also a few select people that kind of blamed the software into what was actually a hardware problem. And that was the boot looping issues that the Nexus 5X had. And even me, I had LG G2 and that suffered from boot loops. And I always thought it was a software problem. And I'm sure a lot of people who had the Nexus 5X probably thought the same thing, but it was actually a hardware problem. And a lot of people suffer from it. LG phones, a lot of them did boot loop, not all of them, but a lot of the major ones, LG G4, G5, G2, mine had, there's a lot of different phones that suffer from it. And the LG Nexus 5X was one of those things. And it sucks so badly because the Nexus 5X was actually one of the phones, I think in 2017 that I recommended people. I was like, this is one of the best, cheapest phones you could buy. I made a whole video about it. And shortly after, just like a year later or whatever, calling it one of the like phones you should not not buy necessarily um, because of that one issue. So LG kind of shot themselves in the foot there. They really shouldn't have done it. They should have spent more time on their supply chain whatever, making sure the Nexus 5X was more set, but you know, it's just kind of annoying they did that. 
Now that kind of covers the software part of it. This thing isn't severely outdated, like I said, but I have seen a lot of ROMs, custom ROMs out for this thing. You can root it, custom ROM it, whatever you want to do with it. There are Android Pie ROMs out for it, but I would probably recommend still sticking with Android Oreo ROMs right now. I think towards maybe like the end of February, early March, I think those ROMs are going to become more stable. So I would probably start recommending them there. But as of now, I would still recommend like the most up-to-date Android Oreo ROM you can find, most up-to-date Android custom ROM for that matter. So that pretty much sums up that. Now in terms of performance, okay, it's kind of decent. It's not like horrible, but like it's like another one of those phones that's in the middle. So it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 chipset, an hexa-core CPU, and two gigs of RAM. And I'm not a huge fan of the whole entire performance of this phone. I feel like it could have been better. I think the Nexus 6P was just slightly better. Even the Nexus 6P wasn't the fastest thing ever, but the Nexus 5X was, I think, a little bit underpowered at the time. You know, this thing came out in 2015 and, you know, the Galaxy S6 Edge that came out at this time had like three gigs of RAM and a much better specs than this thing. So I understand you're paying for the cheap price, but I'll say that it'll to get the job done in a way. It'll take you from point A to point B, like I always say, opening apps, closing apps, multitasking. I guess it's not horrible, but if you expect to have like anything more out of the device than just like the basic usage, this won't really cut it. I guess there's nothing really like severely wrong with it. I mean, you you do get like stock Android so it does kind of like speed up a little bit there and I mean in terms of that that's pretty much it there's nothing really that screams out to me to recommend this phone to people even because of performance because it's not even that good in performance so even gaming I mean I've had a lot of like stuttered glitches here and there glitched frames everywhere I mean crazy things happen with this and and I think it had a lot to do with the price point that it was released too because LG kind of had to like push these parts they had like on the side and just kind of make a phone from it make it for the cheapest price they could and that really showed because of the body it came in and the boot looping issues in the screen so i'll definitely say that gaming everything like that performance as a whole is probably like a six out of ten i'm not a huge fan of it and that's even factoring in the age so even in 2015 it wasn't even that fast and especially now in 2019 almost four years later i don't think it's that fast anymore either now switching to the camera this is pretty interesting so it has a 12.3 megapixel camera and it's not horrible you know it's not amazing either it's like very mediocre in my opinion you do have laser autofocus you don't have optical image stabilization which was pretty interesting because i thought lg had a really good time like putting ois on all their cameras but in a specific case i guess google didn't want it to and you can shoot 4k videos on it and everything and i remember this phone being released and everybody like over hyping it and saying this was the greatest camera ever on a nexus device and they're probably right because the nexus line didn't really was known for having the best camera but i'm surprised because i don't think the nexus 5x has a really good camera anymore i don't know if it has something to do with software or my specific unit or the hardware in general but i don't really think the camera was too good on my specific unit i think it's like okay if you're in good lighting and you could take the photos outside and whatever but i think as a whole i'm not really a huge fan of it i would not trade like a galaxy s6 for this camera i think the galaxy s6 that came out in 2015 as well had a very very good camera much better than this but i guess if you're a very basic user if you don't even take that many photos i don't really think it's going to be that big of a deal the front camera on this thing is also very bad in my opinion it's five megapixels i'm not a huge fan of it either i would say putting both cameras together it's probably like a six out of ten but when you look at the back camera it's probably like a seven out of ten it's not horrible it's usable and if you're in good lighting you might be able to get good shots out of it like i said but i wouldn't put all my eggs just bringing this one phone with me to like a family gathering and expect to take like all the good photos of it in my opinion so the camera i would probably rate like a six out of ten something like that now in terms of battery life this is pretty interesting so this thing does have a usb type c cable but it does not have any wireless charging which is so dumb i don't know why they took it out on this thing but it does have usb type see so that's one way that this phone kind of like made it future proof in a way because you're able to you know use the usb type c that most phones are kind of moving towards now i don't think any phones are being released with micro usb unless it's like a cheap phone so in terms of that it's pretty solid and i don't really think the battery life was that bad on this so it had a 2700 million hour battery because the screen wasn't like 1440p and it wasn't the fastest thing ever it didn't have like 20 gigs of ram and because the screen was like lower resolution as well like i said the battery life wasn't completely horrible i will say that it's not the greatest thing ever so don't think it's like going to last you like 20 days or anything but if i really had to i could probably get a day out of it but i'd probably end up charging it at some point point. and on top of that this phone did not have a removable battery or anything like that so i would honestly say that i would have to charge this thing by the end of the day but not necessarily like in the middle of it i would probably i could probably get through like until like six seven eight o'clock before I had to charge it, but I would definitely not be able to go through a full day on my usage on this phone. So, so that's that. And that pretty much covers the main topics of it. I just kind of want to go over some notable things to note. Like I said, the USB type C pretty important thing. It does have a headphone jack. The buttons, in my opinion, don't feel extremely powerful. They feel kind of cheap and all these other things. 
And that's kind of a huge proponent, especially when you're getting a used phone. You don't want to get a phone that's already falling apart. You want something that still feels fairly premium. This phone, the one specific one I had did not feel that premium. And because it's mostly built out of plastic, I'm assuming a lot of people aren't going to feel that good. This thing also has a fingerprint sensor on the back, which isn't actually that bad. It's actually pretty decent. Like it's the little last you perfectly fine. And the screen is not OLED, but it is 1080p and it's IPS. So I guess it'll get the job done in a way. And you know what? Overall, would I recommend the Nexus 5X in 2019? I will say if you currently have it, you can keep it, but I would probably not recommend picking up a Nexus 5X for mostly the reason, not because it's underpowered, not because of the screen, not because of the build quality, but mostly because of the hardware inside and, you know, the boot looping issue. And, and if I were to recommend a phone that has the boot looping issue and is pretty much like a ticking time bomb, I mean, that would be kind of irresponsible on my part because because I know a lot of people watch these videos and they really want to know my opinion on it. And I really do think even if I personally owned it and I liked it, whatever, I don't think it's a smart decision for people to own it right now. So what I'll tell you is I would probably stay away from a Nexus 5X, but I would completely go behind you picking up a Google Pixel, which is just a little bit more expensive than this. So it's the next phone after this. That was a very, very good phone. I would really recommend that. I think some other phones around this price category would probably be like a OnePlus 2. That's something that comes into mind. I mean, around that $100 mark, the Nexus 5X is probably around like $75. So even like a used iPhone SE, and that's kind of cutting into the size thing but that phone is still supported and you can get those around 70 80 dollars so i'd probably recommend those I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for like a one plus two one plus three t whatever i can find on amazon i'll leave that link down below I'll also leave a link to an iphone sc in the description below too so again if you want to help out the channel definitely buy things through those links a little bit of percentage comes back to this channel and we really do a lot with this so i'd really appreciate it if you guys could get you not only your phones but really anything you want on amazon you can just get it straight through those links and a little bit of percentage comes back to this channel we do more videos like this and more giveaways and things like that so that's pretty much it man if you have any questions or anything like that leave it down in the comment section below hit that like button that don't mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it'll mean so much if you guys could hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel all those links are linked down below i would really appreciate if you guys could check it out but more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys i'll fuck at you guys in the next video peace out till then